Hi, today we've got a review of a low cost microscope system for having a look at PCBs and maybe doing some soldering underneath it. So we've got a Ekins camera which we'll take a closer look at in a moment. It also comes with the lens to attach to it. We've got a ring light. This is a slightly different design to what we've seen previously so we've just got a connector that connects up to these LEDs and then we actually have a separate controller for doing the AC to DC conversion on the current control. And then we have this stand here, which allows us to adjust the height of the microscope. So there's a little lead screw on this that goes up and down, and then you can clamp it in place to stop it wobbling around. Based on the specifications, the camera is relatively capable. So it's got a Panasonic 48 megapixel sensor, and it does say in the spec sheet that we can record at 4K and 2K at 30 frames per second if we record to the micro SD card slot. If you're connecting something to the HDMI port, the maximum resolution we get there is 1080p at 60 frames per second. But uh, we'll have a look to see if we do actually get 4K images out of it, because that would be quite nice to be able to do that. Uh, I'm not sure how it copes with the HDMI output at the same time as recording 4K. Presumably, we still get our 1080p output it just records at 4K, but we'll have a closer look at that in a moment. We can put anywhere up to a 32 gigabyte card in there. Um, it is obviously manual focus, it's just got a sensor here. You do your focusing with the lens attachment, and it just takes a 5 to 12 volt DC input on here. Here we have the LED ring light, so it's a bunch of white 3mm LEDs, a couple of screws there to clamp it on to the microscope lens, and then we've got a DC barrel jack. Now this actually connects to a brightness controller rather than just taking in the 12 volts directly. So this is an adapter for the LED light. Our input is universal from 90 to 240 volts. And then the output is 10 to 12 volts. Presumably that's the compliance voltage at a maximum of 1 amp. So we can dial up and down the current through the LEDs. Let's try plugging this in. We'll start it on the lowest brightness and have a look what this looks like. So there we've got it at the lowest brightness, really quite dim. And that's at full brightness. Let's have a look at what the readings look like for that. And so in the lab with the lab lights on, it's about 4000 lux in general. And then if we hold this at about the height that it will be on the microscope stand, we're getting about 40,000 lux, which is quite bright actually. It's a bit brighter than the previous ring lights that we've had a look at in the past. Uh, but whether that's useful or not really depends on how good the low light performance of this camera is. Let's have a quick look at what the sensor looks like in here and how big it is. And it does look to be quite a small sensor. So I don't expect this to have the greatest low light performance. On the more expensive cameras you see a much bigger sensor which means that it needs less light because uh, the pixels are very slightly larger. But let's have a look at what that actually means. Let's assemble this onto the microscope stand and have a look at the images. So I've actually come across a little bit of an issue here. We've got the ring light, which is supposed to attach to this piece at the bottom. This bit stays fixed. We do have a section here to adjust the zoom and focus slightly. This whole section rotates. And then we've got the mount. But these screws don't quite go in far enough. So when it's screwed in all the way, there's no means to hold the ring light in place. Looking at the image on the website, it shows these coming in slightly more than what we've got here. So I might have to bodge it just for this video, but I will flag that up to the guy at Ekins. So I've got it all set up. I managed to get the LED ring light attached with some longer screws just temporarily. So let's have a look at what the image quality is like. And that actually looks really quite good to me. The This is at minimum zoom, and at that we can get about 25 millimeters of workable area on the PCB. And the lens is about 150 millimeters away from the PCB. So there is enough room there to get underneath and do any work that you need to do. Let's take a look at what it looks like if we zoom in to the maximum. And at full zoom, this is where you need the most amount of light to be able to see what's going on on your board. Uh, but this is actually still extremely clear. I'm not really seeing any kind of graininess. Um, it actually looks better than what the image looks like through the trinocular microscope. So that's really quite impressive. However, because of the extremely high zoom, we've now dropped 
right the way down to about 40 millimeters working distance. So you wouldn't be able to do anything under here without catching on the ring light and the lens itself. So that kind of zoom level is only suitable for inspection really. But I'm really quite impressed with the image quality here. So I've set the microscope up to, sorry, the camera up to record at 4K and it's still outputting the 1080p signal. So that's what goes on if you adjust the resolution. But what I'm going to do now is just try and record some footage at 4K and we can review what it looks like on screen. And the overall image quality on the SD card is looking quite good. There's a little bit of graininess when you zoom in and have a look at what the actual pixels look like. But other than that, this is perfectly workable as a solution for recording video. You can very easily sync audio and video if you want to talk over it. But recording onto SD cards seems to work fine, so you don't need a HDMI capture card like you do on some other cameras. So that's a little look at this video microscope from Ekins, and overall it's quite a nice little piece of kit. Definitely recommended if you're just getting into soldering, or into micro soldering, or if you need to do some inspection of PCBs, because at this price point, actually the image quality is extremely good. In fact, the image quality out of this is almost as good as my trinocular microscope, so if you don't need the eyepieces, this is coming in at a very good price. And I think that's partly down to the camera that they've coupled with this system. The Panasonic sensor appears to be very good at low light performance and does seem to be able to record video very nicely. So I'll put a link in the description down below to the AliExpress listing if you want to take a look and it's got the pricing information there. Uh, but yeah, definitely uh, a nice little piece of kit for beginners and those that are just starting out in repair. Hopefully you found the video useful, and until next time, thanks for watching.